and I now <coughs> give the floor to the distinguished permanent representative of Israel. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to thank you for convening this session, and I want to personally thank my deputy, Ambassador David Roth, who worked with uh, everyone in the United Nations to make this session uh, happen. I want to thank the ministers that came here from Canada, France, Germany, ambassadors, colleagues, and especially Bernard Henri Levy for speaking out and speaking up so courageously. We also joined today by Rabbi Yaakov Montesengo, who sits over there, whose eight-year-old daughter Miriam was murdered in front of a Jewish school in Toulouse in 2012. There are no words to describe the heartbreak and pain that your family has endured. Your presence today here with us should serve as a wake-up call to the nations of the world because a terrorist who takes a child's life is not only an enemy of the Jews, but he is an enemy of an entire civilized world. Mr. President, if Martin Neumüller the German pastor who bravely spoke out against the Nazis were alive today. I imagine that he would say and write, first they attacked the Jews, but I wasn't the Jew, so I did not speak out. Then they attacked freedom of religion, but I wasn't religious, so I didn't speak up. Then they attacked the press, but I wasn't a journalist, so I didn't speak up. Then they attacked freedom of speech and expression, and there was no one, no one to speak up for me because there were no more freedoms left. Mr. President, anti-Semitism is a topic that is very close to my heart. My grandmother, Elfrida, was born in Germany and endured the harassment and hardships that the Jew in Europe faced at that time. By 1936, she knew that there was no future for her and her family in Germany. Just a few months earlier, the Nazis passed the Nuremberg Laws declaring Jews second-class citizens and revoking their political rights. Day by day, she saw Jews being degraded and dehumanized. They were being deprived of their rights, their jobs, and their freedoms. My grandmother took my father and his sister and fled Berlin to Israel. I was born in Israel 13 years after the Holocaust ended. Growing up, I knew many Jews who survived the barbarity of the Nazis. I saw the numbers tattooed on their arms and heard the heartbreaking stories. In a few weeks, I will become a grandfather for the first time. My son's wife, Maya, is sitting over there, here today, with my future granddaughter, and it pains me to know that my granddaughter will be born to a world that is still stained by anti-Semitism. Mr. President, the world pledged never again, but here we are here, Again, 70 years after the Holocaust ended, European Jews are once again living in fear. Two weeks ago, we watched in horror as innocent Jews were murdered in Paris grocery store. Before the Paris siege, it was the gunman who murdered a rabbi and three young children in front of a Jewish school in Toulouse, including Rabbi Monesengo's daughter Miriam and the shooting of the Jewish Museum of Belgium. Violent anti-Semitism is casting a shadow over Europe. Late summer, anti-Israeli demonstrators in Paris turned into violent riots. Graffitis reading, Jews, you end is near, were scrawled on the walls of Rome. Jews were banned from stores in Belgium. An angry mob beat an elderly Jewish man 
In Hamburg, and fire bombs were thrown at Jewish homes in Amsterdam and in Berlin. These hate crimes aren't confined to the masses on the streets. A theater in London refused to host a UK Jewish film festival. An Italian historian called for Israel to face a Nuremberg trial. And a popular Spanish newspaper published an article saying, and I quote, it's not strange that the Jews have been so frequently expelled, end of quote. The words of hate aren't confined to places across the Atlantic. Anti-Semitism can even be found in the halls of the United Nations. Disguised as humanitarian concern, a number of delegates have used the General Assembly, this podium, to voice the anti-Semitic sentiments. Following last summer's conflict in Gaza, a handful of delegations stood at this very podium and accuse Israel of behaving like the Nazis and creating an Holocaust. This is not legitimate criticism of Israel. It doesn't matter how much you are angered or frustrated by our conflict, there is no excuse for statements like that of anti-Semitism, not on the streets, not in the media, not in your governments, and not in this institution. Mr. President, there's no logic or reason to anti-Semitism. An Israeli peace activist and an author, Amos Oz, pointed out that in the 1930s, anti-Semites declared Jews to Palestine. Today they shout Jews out of Palestine. They don't want us to be there. They don't want us to be here. They don't want us to be. If you believe in freedom and tolerance, then you must have the courage of your convictions. A number of international leaders have taken a clear and vocal stand against anti-Semitism, and I commend them. Israel welcomes the historic statement put forward by more than 40 member states, and we invite other states to join us in this effort. Every nation may speak out as clearly as French Prime Minister Manuel Valls, who declared, and I quote, when the Jews of France are attacked, France is attacked. The conscience of humanity is attacked. Every nation may speak up as clearly as Chancellor Angela Merkel, who said, and I quote, I do not accept any kind of anti-Semitic message or attacks at all, not least the ones that were seen at the pro-Palestinian demonstrations disguised as alleged criticism of the policy of the State of Israel, end of quote. Europe is being tested. We don't need any more monuments commemorating the Jews who were murdered in Europe. We need a strong and enduring commitment to the living Jews in Europe. If the governments of Europe succeed in defending the Jewish communities, they will succeed in defending liberty and democracy. Mr. President, the days when Jews were the world victims are over. We will never again be helpless and we will never again remain silent. Today we have the State of Israel standing guard. Al Chomotaych Yerushalayim Efkad Tishomrim, Kol Ayom Vechol Alayla, Tamid Lo Yacheshu. On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have appointed watchmen all day and all night, and they shall never be silent. Israel will never be silent. We will stand God and we will safeguard the Jewish state and the Jewish people. We have seen the evil that man is capable of, and so we must be vigilant. We must spot the warning signs and act swiftly to condemn anti-Semitism. I call on every nation to stand tall beside us, refuse to allow evil to take root, refuse to be silent, and refuse to submit to indifference. Let the message echo from the halls of the United Nations to the streets of Europe, to the capital of every single nation. Stand up for human rights and human dignity by taking a stand against anti-Semitism. Thank you very much, Mr. President.
I thank the distinguished permanent representative of Israel for his statement 